Hello everyone, you welcome to this edition of the 6 p.m. Primetime Newscast on Equinox Television live from my headquarters in Cameroon's economic capital. Dwelling our top stories in this edition of the news, the Cameroon government apologizes to Israel for what the Israeli ambassador to Cameroon has qualified as a big disappointment provoked by comments of a Cameroon government minister on state television. Also in this newscast, we shall show you how thousands of persons internally displaced by the deepening anglophone crisis are managing to survive amid difficulties that they are facing as a result of the fact that they have been displaced out of their areas of residence. Stay with us. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us in this edition of the news on Equinox Television. The Cameroon government has apologized for Israel, to Israel for comments made by a state, uh, made on state television by a government minister, Jean de Momo, who is the minister delegate at the Ministry of Justice, and the minister made comments about the Holocaust. The Holocaust was the systematic, bureaucratic, and state sponsored sought persecution and murder of approximately 6 million Jews by the Nazi regime and its collaborators what has been qualified as deplorable comments on this uh, made by Cameroon's minister delegate at the ministry of justice Jean de Mumu angered the nation Israel and the Cameroon government had to apologize while distancing itself saying minister Jean de Mumu was speaking as a private individual and as president of the Padek political party and not on behalf of the Cameroon government he compared the Bamliki ethnic group in Cameroon to the very rich and economically powerful Jewish community crushed by the Nazi regime under president under Adolf Hitler and uh, he said it would be wrong for uh, the Bamliki uh, group to seek political power alongside their economic influence. He suggested that trying to do so could be dangerous for the entire country. Referring to the Bamiliki native Professor Maurice Kamto, national president of the CRM political party's quest for presidential power and Jean de Momo's statement provoked an outrage from Israel that uh, on Monday demanded for immediate apology, an immediate apology from the ministers for the minister's comments and the Israeli ambassador in Cameroon called it a big disappointment for bilateral relations between the two countries. He was received at the Ministry of External Relations of Cameroon in the nation's political capital Yaoundé and the Minister of External Relations presented the apology of the Cameroon government to the Israeli ambassador to Cameroon. And there have been condemnations of the statements made by the minister delegate at the Ministry of Justice of the Republic of Cameroon, Barista Jean de Jemomo, coming from across the board. Civil society and political actors have been uh, condemning what is referred to as a big a disappointment and a disgrace to the Cameroon government. Take a listen to a politician and a an educationist. I'm talking about Dr. Nick. I watched this particular minister when he was nothing on the streets and then campaigning and so on. I remember him saying something about Anglophone, something very beautiful, trying to give Anglophone their own space in this nation. And we thought that was somebody who was reasonable and speaking. But the day he was made minister, as soon as he came out, he started to insult Anglophones. The same fellow. He started to insult Anglophones and I was scratching my head and I knew something was wrong with him. And I looked at him again and I thought he was thinking more with his stomach than with his head. So it's a very unfortunate thing. And he has just proven that he is a belly fellow, not a head fellow. And uh, I think he needs a little bit of in intelligence and cautioning. Because if, if he's going to continue like this, he's going to put Cameroon in a mess. And I'm glad that when he was saying this time, he was, he was not just talking about, uh, about Cameroonians because he, he, he had just taken up uh, the, the space to be insulting Cameroonians. And for some odd reason, it looks like if you're a minister or a governor or a, 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 an SD or a duo in this country or whoever, when you insult people, 
you get promoted. You know, some have been calling us dogs, rats, cats, cockroaches, and rats. I don't know what things to be wiped out and so on. And then you know, you refer to people as things, dogs, and so on. So it, it, it has becoming it was it was becoming a kind of fashionable that when you have power, you power you have to use power to solve problems for people, to come up with projects to help people, not to sit in your in your air conditioned office on your coat and have your military people and then and then insult people. Insults is not what power you use power for. And this particular minister who was saying this stupid thing about the Israelites and he had he had better resign while he still can or he should be dismissed. Because though the government tried to but you to now to cushion it with the Minister of uh, Information speaking in fact, those are people who want to mess up this new prime minister. This prime minister has things to solve. He, ha he wants to bring peace to the nation. His number one problem is actually to solve the Anglophone problem, to bring peace to this nation, and to see how he can create jobs for youths, and to see how he can stop this importation of food unnecessarily into Cameroon, and get the Cameroonians to be productive, and so that we create jobs and do all sorts of things. There is a lot of tension in the nation, and all that weight is not on the president. All that weight is on our prime minister, His Excellency uh, John Gute, and we should not have people in his government, junior guys, who are trying to mess him up. And I want to send a message to the, to the Prime Minister. Let him know that if he doesn't caution fellows like this, they're actually messing him up. Dr. Nick Nguanyan, politician and education, is reacting there to the statements made by Cameroon's minister delegate at the Ministry of Justice, Barista Jean de Momo statements which provoked anger in Israel, which the requested for an immediate apology and the apology came from the government of the Republic of Cameroon which distanced itself from the statements made by Barista Jean de Dumumu indicating that he was speaking as a private individual as the president of the Padek political party and not on behalf of the Cameroon uh, government and now on to something else now live has become very difficult especially for the past two days in the southwest regional chief town Boya and this is because of the deepening Anglophone crisis operation goes down and efforts of the Boya City Council or the Boya Municipal Council to kick out the ghosts from the town. Derek Jato has more. These are the pieces of what have been left of their properties. Victims of the Monday February 4, 2019 attack in Boya the southwest regional capital are assembling what they can still recognize of their properties but many of their belongings were burnt beyond recognition we go to. and it is not only cars that were damaged but a life too was taken <laughs> a boy was shot at moleko and another wounded Reports say the armed civilian hit here first. The residents of the Southwest Regional Delegate of Secondary Education. And this is what was left of her service car. Ndongo, a neighborhood here still in Boya, was next. Anywhere they went, the armed civilian left traces. And cars have been an indicating factor lately. Boya, Tuesday the 5th day of February 2019. The streets are almost empty and most business centers around the city are not showing any meaningful sign of life. And as of the people living in this capital city, Boya, their day again was spent indoors this February 5th, 2019. Schools and most government offices were not open. Critics say everyone and everything is now squarely affected by this Anglophone crisis in Boya and the situation is increasingly being desperate. In the report coming up next, a Northwest correspondent Mbuk Stella narrates the sad and deplorable stories of internally displaced persons in the crisis hit part of the country, many of them living in deplorable conditions and begging for help. Mbuk Stella has more. Self-medication is gradually becoming the order of the day as persons are continuously being displaced. Now so picking the sick if I may get so much in a potato for hospitals. But now I don't begin a paracetamol. Satara She is a mother of four. She and her children fled their village in Kumbu, new division of the Northwest region, 
Due to the ongoing war in the two English-speaking regions of the country, as of now, she has been depending on persons of goodwill for survival. As we reach for long, they say the road not the pass. We should don't go there. So mommy held away for for four days before we come reach for Bamina. As what is today known as the elder phone crisis drags on, some families have been forced to split, as even the basics can no longer be provided. As I would displace all my things were stolen. Then I'm here in town now. I've lost my job. I have difficulties uh, buying my basic needs. The source of income has reduced. There's no way for me to live as a family head. The displaced persons, like the host, have continued to endure hardship. It was just two of us in the house. Then we can manage one pipe a day. For now, it's not really easy. We can take at least 5,000. Recently, Honorable Estangala, SDF Member of Parliament for Dual Constituency, drug food items, clothes and savon to some of the displaced persons in Bamenda. I have lived the problem, my people are here. I was undo for three months, so I know what they are passing through. If I, as a parliamentarian, can feel so demoralized, what about my people? Hindu and Kambe, savon is now about 705, 500 pounds. Why should I not give them? They don't have money, there is no market, there is no transportation from Bamenda to Ndu and Kambe. So I'm crying for my people that they are suffering. The question is that, what is the UN doing? What is the AU doing? What is the Commonwealth doing? Do they want all Kamari, uh, West Cameroonians to die or before they come to assist us? Prior to the handing of the aid, Honorable Estangala, who also attests she has been displaced, had a working session with the displaced persons who are mostly women and children. My youths have died enough. And that we have more widows, more orphans, and their schools are not going, nothing is happening. I want them to dress neatly. I want them to behave as people who are in the city. There should be no gossiping and they should obey the laws that are in the city. But if it is night, the curfew has not been lifted. They should all stay at home so that they should have no confrontation. Although they are returning happily with the games, the displaced persons as well as their hosts have continued to call on the powers that be to resolve the crisis in the two English-speaking regions of the country. And among the hundreds of thousands of persons internally displaced by the deepening anglophone crisis, there are many children, especially young girls, who are not going to school and they have not been going to school for the two academic years. The last academic years have been uh, practically inexistent for many of the children. Their academic journey has been punctured by the anglophone crisis and in the report coming up Derek Jato, a correspondent in the southwest region takes a look at how non-governmental organizations are now striving to turn the tide they constitute the greater number of the population and defined by economists as the workforce of every economy today some Cameroonians youth are accepting the realities in their country the government cannot employ everybody here so what we need to do is see how we can create for ourselves. Most of them here have just learned that going to school is not being educated or the lone key to success. Now, see, don't speak and pull your arm and allow some other person to think for you and then come and recruit you. And in this struggle for better life, it has also been realized that women are more vulnerable. And ladies, we have a problem. Today in Boya, Kalum Jane Mayabel has given birth to her idea, the Mayabel's movement for the advancement of ladies in Africa. So uh, we've launched Mayabel movement today. The Mayabel movement is there to encourage these young girls to stay strong, to continue with their visions, to continue with their dreams, because this is not the end of life. This is just the beginning of things to come. This movement is coming at a time that something bigger than poverty has been living with Cameroonians youth, especially those in the north, west and southwest regions, for three years now. And that is the Anglophone crisis. Women in the bushes, for instance, are using tree bags 
during their menstruation and the Maya Bells movement is targeting education of some female internally displaced persons for the moment. And the Anglophone crisis is not only affecting the two Anglophone regions, the northwest and the southwest regions of the country, but the rest of Cameroon. For instance, business has been crumbled at the Sodico Motor Park in Bonaberry, Dwala for subdivision. Sumanjikan Gebre reports. Bonaberry Park in Dwala for subdivision on Tuesday. The park, which is usually busy, is very quiet as vehicles, particularly those plying the Duala Boyakumba or Duala Bamenda Highway, are still stationed in the park as a result of the ongoing crisis in the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon. <laughs> A worker in the park says the calm nature of the park is due to the ghost town in the two English-speaking regions. Here in Bonaberry Park, we have so many problems because of the of what is going on between the northwest and southwest. As people are saying, the park is all dry. We are not working, and we have already been used to because. On Monday and Tuesday, there is no work. All of us are in the house. Apart from the traveling agencies whose buses are stationed as a result of the crisis, commercial motorcycles that usually transport the passengers upon their arrival at the park to their different destinations on time are also underutilized because of no passengers. The beginning of the week, we used to walk at least two or three thousand a day. But now, look, you can see this is our bike, our bike parking here. We are just loitering around. There's no car coming from Boya, neither Bamenda. All of the cars, they are parked inside this park. This bike rider adds... I myself that I'm sitting here, I'm having nine people in my house. I used to give 2,000 and it's not enough, of which when I was alone, I was eating like a person, but now nothing is moving. It's not, uh, it's not making sense. Just as the bus drivers, the bike riders have joined their voices to call for an end to the crisis. I pray, Papa God, that let him put hand to this matter. Let them stop sharing blood to this true region. I'm begging each and every one of us that let them go and speak to our father in Yaoundé because he's having, he's the father that is ruling all of us. We are just behind him. With a lockdown announced in the two English speaking regions by separatist fighters, many are asking when activities within the park, particularly those plying the Duala Boya Kumba Highway and Duala Bamenda Highway, will resume effectively as the crisis continues to worsen. The literal delegate of the Ministry of Youth Affairs of the Republic of Cameroon has urged young people to be hard working and get busy or to be busy with things that will be profitable for their lives and avoid getting involved in things that could jeopardize their future. He was speaking at the Beseke Valley Ceremonial Ground during the launching of activities leading up to the celebration of the 2019 National Youth Day. 11th of February 2019. Immaculate Fogwe reports. Immaculate Fogwe with that report on activities leading up to the 2019 National Youth Day with the delegate of the Ministry of uh, Youth Affairs and Civic Education for the Littoral Region, urging young people to get busy with things that will be profitable for them and notably by avoiding getting involved in things that could jeopardize their future. We'll be coming back to that report as uh, subsequently. And now we're going to wrap up with campaigns ahead of elections in Senegal and uh, Nigeria. For me, I'm Strong Sander. Yemi Osin Banjo was on a campaign trail to the town of Kaba in Kogi State 
for his All Progressive Congress APC party ahead of the February 16 general election in Nigeria when his helicopter crashed. Surviving the crash, Osin Banjo took to his Twitter handle stating that they are extremely grateful to the Lord for preserving their lives from the incident. The presidential race in Nigeria has been narrowed down to a duel between former Vice President Atiku Abubakar and incumbent President Muhammadu Buhari. Atiku Abubakar is running under the banner of the People's Democratic Party PDP while Muhammadu Buhari is candidate of the ruling All Progressives Congress APC Party. Atiku Abubakar, fighting to replace aging Muhammadu Buhari, will be going in for his fourth attempt after he tried and failed in 2007, 2011 and 2015. Still in West Africa, Senegalese head to the polls on February 24 to elect a president for the 11th time since independence in 1960. The incumbent president, Macky Sall, will be seeking a second mandate after he defeated former incumbent Abdullah Ward in 2012 to become the fourth president of Senegal. Senegal's first presidential election after independence held in 1963 with the victory of Leopold Seda Senghor, who became the first president of Senegal. He was later succeeded constitutionally by Abdul Diouf in 1981 after his resignation. Abdul Diouf will later be beaten by Abdullah in 2001 in what has been qualified as a historic opposition victory in Senegal after 40 years of socialist party reign. Ahead of the February 24th presidential election, incumbent Macky Sall is up against four other aspirants to secure his second and final term in office. His main opponents are Idrissa Seg, former Prime Minister in Senegal and Madike Nyang, candidate of Wade's Senegalese Democratic Party. This newscast meet our guest in some few seconds. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us in talking point, civil a historian and member of the civil society in the Republic of Cameroon, Gilbert. Give me your welcome. Thank you, Mr. Babina. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm glad back again once again to, for us to discuss uh, things that are at stake in our country. Thank you very much. Your first time to be on set since 2018 started. Yeah, uh, a lot of things have gone and a lot of things have happened, you know. The Anglophone crisis, Anglophone problem, which many people have refused to recognize, and then mm, the tumult that is occupying the political scene in Cameroon now, and, and a lot of things uh, politically, externally and internally that is occupying the nation, especially a lot of uh, losses that uh, Cameroon has incurred, beginning with the African Cup of Nations, that we have shamefully let go and uh, there are so many things to talk about uh, right. which and unfortunately uh, to the disfavor of our country lots of, lots of things equally happening in the southwest region of chief town with repressive measures uh, being taken by this council to kick out the ghosts from the southwest region of chief town what's your take on what has been happening in boya of recent uh, repression is uh, a song that has been sung ever since. I sometimes wonder if uh, we, this country really has a constitution that people care to, 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 to respect because uh, it appears like people don't have the right to manifest. It appears like people don't have the right to express the anger. It appears like nobody has the right to question what goes on. In sure. Boya, just like in the whole of the Anglophone areas, repression has been uh, manifesting ever since the Anglophones decided to say we are okay, we are we have taken enough to this kind of uh, high pass centralization uh, system. If the municipalities in Boya are trying to re to 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 to, 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 to oppress, to impose, it is just normal. It is a song they have inherited from. 
the rest of the country, the government in place, which of course they are representing. And it is not surprising to see that uh, they shops are using been, shops violence. Are, shops have been sealed on Mondays. Those who respect Operation Ghost Towns, uh, Operation Ghost Town, their shops are sealed. Taxi drivers say the uh, camps are uh, seized. They are compelled to park in the premises of the council on Sundays in order to compel them to hit the roads on Monday. Their private documents are seized, driver's licenses and identification papers. Well, it, it is surprising to hear that those who are seizing, those who are uh, sealing the shops, those who are seizing papers and those others, themselves do not live in that very south west. So when they do all those things, they run away and some of them come to little run. It is very shameful to say this, but it is very important to say it that they don't live in the southwest. That is a clear story. Those authorities in Boyade, those authorities elsewhere don't live in those towns because they themselves are respecting the ghost town. Why is the government not solving the problem? Ghost town affects everybody. When the economy is closed down, when the economy is locked up, it affects everybody. It's not only the Anglophones. They are Cameroonians of all languages, I mean, Francophone Cameroonians and Anglophone Cameroonians in Boya, in Bamenda, everywhere in the English region. We just demonstrated how it is already affecting uh, motor parks and everywhere. How cars are not moving against circulation is a standstill now. Normally, you know that when Ghost Town is declared and it is effective, individuals, the government losses, everybody is in the loss. And it is normal that steps need to be taken to stop the process of ghost town from continuing because it may get to a level where not only some uh, uh, traders, not only some individuals, the government may get involved. The, once the government gets involved, it means that the whole country is already involved in the whole process. And, so and that is too bad. Uh, and that is too bad for a government that is refusing to look into the genuine problems that the people have decided to take up courage to denounce it. And just like the mayor is, um, in a way, compelling taxi drivers to hit the streets and business persons to open their shops, the governor also of the Southwest region, and now Kalia Bila, is compelling civil servants to be present in their offices on Mondays or face the law or be considered as sympathizers of pro-independence fighters. Well, these are two people who are first and foremost very, very unpopular themselves. They, the mayor himself is a non grata con in, in his municipality in his municipality right away. The governor himself is a non grata in his region right away. It is clear we said it. These are people who have lost respect, lost personality, lost popularity, lost everything away they are. The governor is there, he can say anything. After all, he has account to render all it to you, only not to the people he is governing. And that's what Anglophones have said we don't want to hear again, where people who govern us cannot be accountable to us. They're accountable to some other person who they can decide to do what they like. The, uh, the mayor himself is there. He has decided to choose his path. And I don't think he represents the aspiration. He represents the, the problems. He represents the feelings, the pains that the people in the municipality who voted for him, who he thinks voted for him, actually stand for. He is a non grata in that, in that, in that in municipality. And as I told you, he no longer lives there. When he passed those his orders, who, which none of them has ever materialized, he runs out. Anyway, Running we, we, out means that he himself is recognizing and obeying the ghost town. What and what's the essence of always saying all the same that we, taxis should go out? All the same, the we, we have been seeing him on the, uh, on the streets. Uh, in places like uh, Muliko, in class quarters, on Mondays during the Operation Ghost Town, uh, trying to make sure that, uh, according to him, uh, the economy of Boya is revived because the economy of Boya, as well as the council, is severely um, affected by the Anglophone crisis and he's been struggling to revive the economy of Boya by kicking out the ghosts while the governor of course on his part is um, struggling to restore uh, some peace and stability according to the Yaoundé administration in his area of command and not to allow things completely get out of hand as they seem to have been uh, moving for quite some time now and now 
you listen to the minister, delegate at the Ministry of Justice, Jean de Jemumu, on state television last weekend, and he made some comments that angered Israel and provoked an apology from the Cameroon government. What's your analysis of this? Well, uh, politicians in Cameroon are noted to be those kind of people who drag the blanket in bed only to their own side. Uh, that is somebody who left PADEC, po opposition political party of recent. And, uh, He's still the president of the party. Anyway. Yes, and uh, aligned himself in, within a so-called uh, group G20 who supported the ruling, the party close to power CPDM and uh, got victory again in the last presidential election. And uh, uh, like politics has always fruits to bear, he was appointed. Probably it is because of that appointment excitement that got him into making ultra-virus pronunciations that is getting the country in which will maybe get the country into diplomatic uh, problems with Israel. Cameroon enjoys a lot of diplomatic uh, relations with Israel, especially when Aijo left power. When Bia came in and decided as a Christian and decided to usher in a new blood in Cameroon, diversify Cameroon's relationship with Israel, move into the immediate is something Aijo did not want to hear because of his Arab feelings. Now what we need to know is that what he said should be considered at two levels. One, a political, the political, uh, a, an opposition political party leader, Padek, who he is in the first place, because being a minister delegate in the Cameroon government doesn't make him a member of the party that has power. That is supposed to be understood at that level. Secondly, a minister in the Cameroon government already means that you are a player in the field. So he, the, the he has a double identity now. The government, however, indicated that he uh, participated in that program and spoke like an individual, the president of PADEC, and not on behalf of government. But is it possible to dissociate Minister Jean de Dieu from uh, the politician and the statesman? Also? It is just the same like dissociating uh, Minister Issa Cheruma, who has who even wears the clothes, uh, who wears dresses where the pictures of President Bia is there, where he is the president of SNLC. It is very terrible to say that somebody who is in government ruling a different political party will speak on behalf of a different political party. That has never happened, we know. Minister Belo Buba Margari cannot talk again on behalf of the UNDP. Mr. Be Minister Be uh, Issa Cheruma cannot talk again on behalf of FNLC, he too has no right again to talk on behalf of PADEC. It is just normal. They have decided to choose their way and so be it. And if he is talking, let the government know that a minister has already soiled the name of the country and they know the way to redress it other than trying to, to uh, situate him within another political party, which right. as of now he is not again because he is now talking on behalf of the Cameroon government because he is minister delegate in the Cameroon government. Even though the government refused that he was not speaking in behalf of uh, the government, however, he was speaking as an individual according to the uh, release issued by the Cameroon uh, government. Thanks so much, Gilbert Gimdo, your historian and member of the uh, civil society in Cameroon. Thanks for coming. Thank you very much. Glad to be here and to talk about pertinent things of such. Thank you. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us. Goodbye.